yeah, weapons in, in prison, yeah, and the sort of weapons people use. Uh, when I was in the scrubs years ago, I was in, in d -Ring for a couple of months, yeah, been transferred from a prison, long term, long termer, didn't stay there very long. But a mate of mine was there, and he was a cleaner in a security office, yeah, and he was telling me about uh, this big, they've got a big uh, glass cabinet in there with all the weapons that they found in the prison over the years, yeah. And he said that one they found there was a zip gun, uh, a long tube with elastic band on it, and you know, you've got a bullet in it, it buys bullets, mate. And you know, I mean, they found that in D Wing, in the long term wing, yeah. He said, mate, you wouldn't believe what they found in there, mate. Like knives, uh, hooks to try and get over the, over the fence. Yeah, they found loads of things, but I'm on about uh, the things I've seen whilst I've been in prison. I mean, I mean, I've seen like people. I mean, now it's different. Yeah, now it's all down to uh, a jug, hot water, and sugar. But in my times, didn't have. It wasn't. That wasn't even thought about. You know, hot water. Yeah, maybe, but not all that sugar and all that in it. But um, made up tools in the scrubs. I've seen people with pencils. Uh, they really, really sharpen the pencil up. Use that as a weapon. An order pencil. Uh, one of the best ones is a is a is a, a biro, a biro, but a metal biro. Yeah, they take the take the the nipper, the the, uh, the 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 bit you write on, take that out and they sharpen it up and they plant. They they use that. Yeah, I've seen that used. I've seen plastic knives sharpened up. Uh, one of the best ones, bolster ones. I used to see was um, when they had um, like a toothbrush. Yeah, and they melt the toothbrush end. And they get a, uh, a razor blade, snap the razor blade, and put two blades into into the the melted toothbrush. Yeah, so they've got two blades at the end, and they used to cut people across the face, and it was really hard to stitch up when it was like that. Yeah, two big blades, two blades. Yeah, and another thing they used to do is cut the ass, cut uh, cut the ass really really bad. Yeah, really bad. Yeah, uh, obviously plastic knives sharpened up, used as as tools. I've seen forks. Turn around the blades, the, the, the handle uses as a tool when they do it with a razor blade, cut it sharp to a point. There's lots of things that people use in there. Uh, bed legs, someone said to me on, on my, one of my comments, where do they get iron bars? They get iron bars off the bed leg, yeah? Um, in prison, uh, you've got the bunk beds, yeah? And the bed leg, they're always loose. You can pull them out, the actual bed leg, yeah? It's about that long. It's about, what, seven, eight, eight inches long. It's a weapon, mate, you know, and they use that, put that in a sock, whack, you know, and they use billiard balls in a the sock. There's lots of things. I've seen people snap the billiard cue and stab people in, in the chest and the arms. There's a weapons in prison, mate. It's quite, I mean, prison is a dangerous place, without show of that, the amount of people that go in there and for what crimes and all this, that, and the other bit. My mate Togi Ludlow, I was in Albany with Togi, and when he went on the march, yeah, he, you knew that someone was getting stabbed up bad, and I'm on about bad. He'd stab him up, mate, really, really bad. Blades, I mean, they had a metal shop in there, uh, in that wood, wood shop in there, where they'd make uh, proper knives, wooden knives, yeah, and, you know, get plunged up with one then, mate, you know about it, and they break it in your body, you know about that as well, yeah. Um, what else have I seen? Soap. I mean, a lot of a lot of them, the old timers, used to use soap. You know, like white Windsor soap and the brown soap. They used to get tins, yeah, tins, uh, like lids of tins. Fold them over, right, and put them in the soap. Yeah, get the soap, put them in the soap, melt the soap, put it in the soap, and use that as a tool. Yeah, across your face, across your arse, a bit with soap. So they have nothing on their hand. So what they do, when they cut a man really, really bad, right, just shit the blade on the floor, they're not bothered, there's no fingerprints on the blade, and they put the soap in boiling up water so it melt, so no fingerprints. And that was one of the best ones I've seen used, yeah, when they put, I mean, Tom Lashley, uh, the rapist guy, that I was to train with in the gym, you know, I did, anyway, forget about that, but I was to train with this geezer, but didn't know too much about the case. It's only come out later on. And they done him with a pineapple tin, 
pineapple tin lid, yeah? But that was, they'd done that with um, soap, put it in, in the soap and cut him really, really bad, like a, about half an half, half inch cut down his, down his face, yeah? With a tin, a pineapple tin, you know? They all jagged. And that's a, that's a weapon. That is a bad weapon. A pineapple tin, any tin, really, that's been cut with a tin opener is a proper tool, yeah? A proper, proper tool. I mean, kitchens, I've worked in, what, three or four kitchens, and kitchens are so dangerous, mate. Kitchens are really dangerous. I mean, you know, I mean, every there's tools about 24-7. They've got a, a board in there, you know, they've got a sign for the knives, but anybody can take a knife off and use it, yeah? Uh, the butchers have all got knives, boning knives, this knife, that knife, they've got eight knives, choppers they've got as well. Um, what I was in the bakers, you've got knives to chop to, to cut the cut the uh the, the dough when you mold molding it to put in the bread tins. Everyone's got tools in there and they're washing up, they've got all tools as well, they're washing tools up all day long. The coppers have got tools, they've got their great big paddles. It, it, there's so many tools in prison that you can get hit with and bashed up with. It's it's uh it's mad. I remember um, years and years and years and years and years ago, yeah, in my YP, um, I had a fight with a young kid. Um, I had not cut the teeth out in a shower. It's a silly thing, this is crazy, it's a kid's thing, isn't it? But when I went to the scrubs, um, used to go to the cinema, yeah, go to the cinema, and D Ring used to go to the cinema as well. Uh, and they used to sit behind us in the seat, in, in, anyway. And this guy's brother uh, was in there. And where I was sitting, they sit about two steps two behind me. Mate, they tried to stab me up with a proper, proper blade. A made up blade, yeah? A proper made up blade, like a proper blade, yeah? It was like it had a rubber handle and it was a proper, um, like an axle blade with a thick axle blade. They made it into a proper knife, yeah? Because in them, in them places like the scrubs, them sort of places got metal shops and all that, they just bzzz, cut them down and make a blade out of it. They get, it's well known in there, yeah? And they tried to just stab me up in the back. I got, I mean, I got out of it, you know, and I put it on him and uh, it, it, it happened. But when I went to Albany, he was in uh, D-Wing, I was in C-Wing, and I was always in the gym. And this particular time, they was, uh, people was on the roof, of, of Albany, so they made us a gym right by the kitchen, a little gym, and I walk, walks in there, and who was there? This geezer, this geezer, and another guy here, who I ain't gonna name, name his name, name his two names anyway, and they got uh, two big knives to come and do me, yeah, and it was for the grace of God, well for the grace of God, that I jumped off the bench quick, yeah, and I picked up a big bar, you know, big weightlifting bar, massive bar, and I said, well, come on in, you know what I mean? And, and, it, and, it, and it, everybody just swallowed and said, you know, this walked away. But they had these great big blades that they made up, wood, wood blades they have made, made, you know. And if it, for the fact that I didn't get up and I got off the bench, I'd been dead. They'd have just stabbed me to death, you know what I mean? But anyway, that was just, that was all what the mouth of it, yeah? But I've seen people, I mean, Toby was the worst. I mean, when Toby went on the march, or him and about four other people, and they were getting paid to cut someone up, they would do it, you know, they would have all sorts of blades, you know, that, you know everything that you name, like the, the soap with the tin, you know, and the blades made out of wood, blades made out of metal, they'd have all this. I mean, the guy that I had a row with, and I got 1074 over, um, I mean, it, when, when, when my door clicked, he come to stab me with a blade, with a made-up made blade, you know, a proper wooden made-up blade. You know, you got to be so careful in your places. You know, people think, ah, oh, prison, you know, but prisons, you know, you, people go, yeah, you can't get iron bars in prison. Of course you get iron bars in prison. What about Wally Bender? What about Wally Bender when them two, two mates, two mates there was, a bit, one done a dirty on the other, he went out and sold all the bits and pieces that they'd been making. 
all his matchsticks, toys and paintings and bits and pieces. Then he'd come back in a recall and he knew that he was going to get a clump from Steve. So he went into Ronnie Bender's cell. Ronnie Bender had a weightlifting bar in there, uh, a, a little dumbbell bar. And he knew the guy was going to come in because he always cleaned Ronnie's cell, cell out. As he's come in, he went through with the iron bar, the guy's put his hand up quick, and the bar fell in the floor. Steve picked up the bar and smashed the guy to pieces, killed him stone dead. And when he walked in there, his face was inside out. You know, his face was inside out, mate. You couldn't recognise it. It was like everything was inside, you know what I mean? Yeah, he, he, I don't know what he got for that, a life for that as well. I mean, that's the sort of thing that happens in there, you know? Um, who else have I seen? Uh, Billy McGee. Billy McGee, uh, Billy McGee, when he killed Jules Cockle, um, working in, working in the in the shop. Billy McGee had um, two Quartwins chisels doing lathe work, yeah? And because, what's his name's come in there, Jules Cockle trying to go at him, it's Billy McGee trying to defend himself, stabbed him 14 times with a Quartwins chisel. You know, this, if these things go on 24-7, mate. I mean, what's his call it? Um, the, big, uh, the guy, the guy, the guy that's um, done me. I mean, me and him, me and him had murders when Peter Kelly and everyone else was there. And I was walking around the yard taking a mick out of these people. Uh, when I eventually went back there in 80-odd, eight, eight these people uh, was back in prison, back in, in, in there, you know. And they, Mulligan, Dennis Mulligan. And they thought to themselves, well, raised by his shop now, he ain't got no one. So when I come up, and they attack me, they attack me with weapons. They attack me with forks, rakes, all sorts of things in the garden. They nearly killed me. I was in hospital for a couple of weeks there. Do you know what I mean? They nearly killed me. And that's the sort of thing prisons, what, what prison is all about. You know, like people go, to, I mean, look at the trouble I have with these guys that try to kill me anyway. He pushed me down the stairs when I was getting all the laundry, pushed me down the stairs and then ripped my tummy open three or four times with a standing knife. Yeah, with a standing knife, put in, put in wood, put in another bit of wood with a standing knife, yeah? They heated it up, got it in there, they put some sort of stuff in it, glue in it, so it was solid, and they ripped my panty and stabbed me up, mate. There's so many weapons in prison. I mean, come on, it's it's people, so many people that get, look at what happened to me with them Indians, yeah? The Indians that raped that kid. I mean, when I walked up to the recess to do the first one, I mean, i done him with everything. i done him with everything that was laying around, i done him with, I smashed him to pieces, you know? And and the, le the second one, walking around the yard, and I went into the recess, I got a scrubbing brush. And the scrubbing brush shaped like at the, uh, as like a curve at the end, and I smashed these guys at pieces with a scrubbing brush. But that's a weapon. There's so many weapons in there in prison, right? So many weapons. And as, well, as I said, the worst place to work for, with weapons is the kitchens. Johnny Patton. Johnny Patton, yeah, when he got on the roof at uh, Albany, the last one down, burnt to pieces, done all his kidneys, done all his liver in a bad, bad way. Uh, wound up in Parkhurst, wound up uh, in a card school with another guy earning money, earning tobacco. Found out the guy was was nicking money from him. Went down out the guy, the guy, the guy pulled a big knife out him. Went to do Steve. Steve went away. away. Uh, got all his mate who works in the kitchen. He said, "Listen to me, if I get me a knife out the kitchen." And the guy got a knife out the kitchen. They just didn't get him out because they shut the nick down. Look for him, yeah. And he shut down Parkhurst, looking for this boning knife. A boning knife is so sharp, it's unbelievable. Thin knife, you know, but sharp as anything. It's got in it, cut all around the bones and all that in the meat. And uh, he got that, Sir Johnny Patton. And he went into the cell and stabbed the geezer about 20 times. Stabbed him to death, mate. The guy Johnny Patton was doing the 12, nearly finished the 12, and then got a life, stabbing the guy to death. So people in prison, mate, a schizophrenic psychopath, there's loads of them in there. You know, and you never know who you're with, who you're chewed up with, who you're freed up with. You never know, you know. It's the same when you go to the big nicks and you've got your single cells. You don't know who's in them. 
You ain't got a clue who's in themselves. You know, there's, I mean, oh, it's a, Lewis was a saint. I remember in Lewis, right, me and Freddie, a Freddie called Freddie Pooley. We've had so many rows in with other people. They come to Freddie Pooley, right? They come to Freddie Pooley with the broom handle, yeah? They snapped his broom handle off and made a blade of this broom handle, mate. It was about, what, eight, nine inches long? And made a blade out of it, mate. And they come to Freddie Pooley, mate. I'll tell you what, if Freddie Pooley hadn't have moved that quick, he'd have gone straight for his arm. He caught him in the arm. It went in his arm, went in about three inches in his arm. He said, you know, and we smashed these people to pieces. Me and Fred, we smashed them to pieces. I mean, they was cowards. They was proper cowards, but it doesn't matter how much of a coward they are, they made a weapon, mate, and they was going to do you. The weapons in prison, there's we, people, listen, there's people out there watching this, me now on, on my video, who've been in prison, who know about weapons. Yummy, yummy B, yummy B TV. You know, they are one of the worst. You know, they, they used to get him to do hits on people and to ask him about any weapons he's used on people in, in prison. You know, all right. Listen, people said to me the other day, I shouldn't have said that what Yami getting a knife. But Yami, in prison, Yami used to do that. Yami used to go and, and, and hit, hit people, drug people who were selling drugs to, and hit them, stab them up. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you wouldn't believe the amount of blades that are made in prison, it's mad. It's mad, you see them. They make blades out of anything. Anything they make blades out of, mate. Honestly, it's so easy to make a blade in there. Now, the beds, the springs, the old the old spring beds, they should take the springs out and knot them, and, and, and knot them up, yeah? Knot them a bit thick, and knot them up and sharp them. And shh. I remember, listen, in my, when I was in my young days, right, in Ashford with my prison, all the bed springs, the old spring beds, comfortable with anything, yeah, the old spring beds. And people should undo to get the springs, get them, undo them, these springs, take them, and take them apart, yeah, the springs, it's ages, and put them together, wrap them together, and sharpen them up. And blades, mate, spring blades, I'm telling you, mate, sharp, sharp as anything. Cut you down, a, it wouldn't stab you, but cut you down, cut you fucking to pieces. Rip your, your face to pieces, you know, and cups. I mean, that's why, that's why um, years ago, when I was in prison, years ago, they, you had a knife with a little blade, you had a fork and you had a spoon that was all metal. Yeah, seriously, you had metal bowls, metal uh, sweet bowl, and you had the metal tray, yeah? Honestly, and that was going on for quite some time until people were stabbing people to death with the with, with the uh, with the knife. I know the knife only had a blade about an inch long, but it was flat, very flat, very wide, yeah? But people sharpen them. you got to give it back, you know, you got to be, they get them and sharpen them, keep them, and, and, uh, and everyone's looking for it and they can't find it, and get them and sharpen it up. You know, listen, you got to remember in people, in them prisons, yeah, they're, as I said before, you got the schizophrenic psychopaths, right, that you don't know who's a schizophrenic psychopath, do you know what I mean, that are in there, mate, and do some terrible damage, and do some terrible damage to people, you know, they don't think that, them people are walking around the landing, right, looking for you, to stab you up, yeah, to stab you up. Imagine me, 19 stone, big guy can have a right fight. They know they can't fight me, mate. They know they're going to get beat. But when they've got a blade around them, and they've got people who's going to do me, I'm in trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble, so I'm, I'm fighting for my life. You know, you know, you know if you upset someone, and you know that he ain't going to fight you, mate, and you know he's going to do you, come in me very cunning, come up behind your back and plunge you in your back. So you got to be very cunning, mate. I've been plunged up in the belly, you know what I mean, in the shoulder. You got to be you got to be on the ball, mate. It's very easy to die in prison. Because it that's what people say. It isn't about going in prison. 
It's about getting out in one piece. And it is that. It is that. You can go in prison and come out ripped to pieces, scarred up. You can go in prison and die in prison. And, and I've seen two, three murders in prison. And it's that easy, mate. It's that easy where they've set people's cells alight. Set themselves alight. And they've only got out for the grace of God. People have gone in there and sprayed themselves up with some, some sort of stuff and set themselves out and shut the door. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've seen it in there, mate. Seen them do it. Seen them do it. You know, people, there's some bad, listen, you're getting people in there that are bad, bad, bad sex offenders. Bad people that do bad things to young kids. People that do bad things to young girls. You know, them people have got to be obliged. And then people get, then people get obliged, mate. I mean, look at me and Bill. We went up to the, went up to the, went up to the freeze recess, and we smashed the geezer with a lump of wood, with a chair leg. We smashed him to pieces. Bit of screws give us. Go on, go up and do it. Go up and do it. But make sure you ain't in there too long, and you don't give him time to scream. You're fucking smashing the geezer to pieces with a chair leg. Sex offender. That come down to the up plate, you know, and the screw saying to us, but <laughs> which is true, what someone said to us, how do you know that he was a sex offender? How do you know that he was a, not, not, not a normal con? Because what a screw told you that he was a sex offender? How do you know that he ended up sitting the screw? And the screw thinks, well, what am I getting done now? Tell everybody he's a sex offender. Well, they told me, Billy Williams, that these people were sex offenders and we went and sorted them out because that was what we did. But as you say, you don't know who they are. They, can, they might not be sex offenders, but you ain't going to give them a chance to tell you that they're not sex offenders. You're going to go straight in and, and oblige them. You know, and, and when I said someone pulled out of an iron bar and it's what went to do me with the iron bar and it because you know, I fell to the floor and Billy Williams come over to crack and crack the geese and actually spark out. The, that, the iron bar that he said that you can't get iron bars in prison was up for chair leg, was a, uh, was a bed leg. People, people that have never been in prison, right, they give comments like, well, yeah, where would you get an iron bar from in prison? Mate, prison is prison. In prison, you can get anything you want if you put your mind to it, anything. Blades, keys, Anything you're made in prison because you've got to remember the amount of people you get in there, they can do all sorts of things. Yeah, remember that. Yeah, <laughs> not everybody in there is a is a, a, a nutcase, a professional, whatever. There's a lot of people in there that do things with their hands and can make things. Do you know what I mean? So you get these things from these people. Lewis, uh, when they found Freddie Pooley and we done the guys, we bashed the guys up, mate. Seriously, I could have got anything out of that kitchen because in the morning I was in the coppers and I could get anything out of that kitchen, anything before it went on top. Yeah, I could have got anything out of it, but I didn't. I do it, we done it our own way. Yeah, anyway, what else is there? What who else? What else have I seen? Well, I mean, the hot water and the, the sugar uh, that's an old that's a later on thing that's like. In the 90s, they started doing that. In the 90s, that is a thing that come out, and that's um, that's really bad. That's worse than getting stabbed up. A mate of mine, a mate of mine, yeah, was mucking about with someone's wife, yeah, and uh, the guy gets all hurt, hit, hit, heard about, heard about it, and the guy couldn't do nothing because he was in another part of the wing, the neck, yeah. So what he'd done, he got to give someone a lot of money. Um, the guy was uh, in, in his bed and he walked running in the cell and he'd done him with a jug of boiling hot water and sugar on his chest. He's nearly died, mate. You can't get it off. It's got eating through your chest. You can't get it off. It's just, you know, it's done him. He's nearly died. He was lucky that he pulled through it. You know what I mean? That's a wicked thing, that, that, that term, hot water and sugar. That's mad, mad. I mean, 
when you're outside, when you're outside, and most of us that used to do armed robberies, uh, used to go tooled up, sawing off shotguns, single barrel four ten, sawing off, sawing off double barrel shotguns, twelve balls, saw them off, and guns, now, bad, you know, snub nose bullets that are going to kill you stone dead. A lot of people go work, we work with these things. Lots of people go work with big machetes, big blades, you know, and all that. I mean, when I was going to work with a shotgun, I mean, I've been, I was going to work with a shotgun the first one we got done on, on the wine shop, but decided not to take it with me, but the other ball found it in my ass on my mattress, you know, and I, it was a 410 with a silver shell. You know, but when we, then that there, when my sister, some guys tried to run after my sister, I come out of the house like a lunatic with a 410, with the shell, the silver shell, and I was going to kill them, mate. If I'd have found them, you know, I'd have gone mad. I had a pocket full of shells, pocket full of 410 silver shells in my pocket. I'd have killed them and started dead. But, you know, everybody that goes to work, a lot of people in, in, in the uh, 70s, when there was all armed robberies. I mean, the prison then, in the 70s, and you know, up to the 80s, everybody in there, I should be 99% of the rest of, of, of the GBHs and rapists and all that kind, but all 99% of guys in prison was in for armed robberies, all walking around with guns, shotguns, you know what I mean? And guns, 38, so all them fucking mean, 44s or 40, you know, all sorts of guns. Smith and, Smith and Westerns and all these sort of thing. Yeah, and, and, and big long blades and machetes and people were going, nah. I remember going to a dance with this bird, Eileen, yeah? And she was a manager, manager F, manager S, of a big, big bank, yeah? And I was going with her. You know, I knew she worked for a bank. It didn't bother me, you know, you know, she didn't bother her. But when I went to a party, everybody in that party uh, worked in the bank. So, you know, just worked in doing whatever they was doing. And so this woman, and I was all nice and smart, smartened up, never had no tackles on my hands, smartened up. Um, she came over to me and said, hello, so are you, are you? And she talk really nice, yeah. And I had a little bit of a drink. I didn't, never used to drink, you know, but if I did drink, it'd take one drink and I'd be pissed. But I'd had a couple of drinks, and she came up to me, and then we started talking and writing really nicely. And uh, what do you do as a living? I said, well, banks. <laughs> I swear my life. She said, what do you do? I said, well, banks. She screamed. And she went, you're one of them people that come into the bank. I've had my bank robbed. You're one of them people that put guns in people's mouths. The shotguns and handguns, you're the people, you're the people that make, make us a bang of nerves. And she started really crying and screaming. I had to get out of the ass. <laughs> I only went mad. Yes. I mean, come on. It's like, it is true. You know, like the Wembley lot. All that Wembley lot is going there, mate, and jump over the counter with shotguns and, and sledgehammers and all that. And uh, them, them people that worked in there was petrified. They never worked again. You know, they never worked in the bank. Never worked in their life again. It, is, it must be a terrible sensation to uh you know to be robbed with people who've got guns or knives machetes and all that you never know if you're going to get shot you never know if them guns are not loaded i mean when i done when i done the uh the old wobbly part part what, what, what got arrested for put, put away for um i had a shotgun um double l shotgun and when the car hit me the government flying, sawn off, government, government flying, and I went, smashed to pieces. I run and got the gun, run towards the guy over the car, and let let the shots go. And I, I mean, I had salt and rice in, in there, yeah? And it's mad. It's mad. Imagine if I had had shells in there. Imagine if I had had, like, pellets. I'd have killed him, you know what I mean? But the same for the grace of God that we put that in the, in into the, into the, into the garbage. But people, really, I mean, loads of people don't realise when 
gangsters and villains go prepared to do an armed robbery, they go prepared to shoot someone. If you get in their way, they're going to shoot you. They're going to shoot you. They don't. I mean, a lot of a lot of them don't go um, with, with with the pellet with their uh, cartridges uh, with salt and sugar in and things like that in. No, they go with pellets in. So if you don't give them the money, they're going to shoot you dead, mate, or shoot your leg or whatever. There's loads of people being shot on robberies, yeah? You know what I mean? But if someone goes prepared, I mean, you watch, I mean, you go on YouTube, um, it shows you about the flying squad, when they've got um, old robberies on there, 1950s, not, not 1950s, sorry, 1990s and 1980s, 1982s, 1991s, and all them sort of robberies on there, when people have gone tooled up, tooled up. And you know, and they got automatics that fell on the floor when the old will come on them. Do you know what I mean? You imagine. I mean, we've all had it. We've all gone tooled up. We've all gone tooled up. We're, all of us have gone with blades, machetes, and all that. You know what I mean? Whether or not we're going to use them is another thing. But if you go tooled up with a shotgun, mate, and it's got something in it, and it comes on top of you, you're going to use it. You will use it. You know, that is the worst part about arm robbers, yeah? That's the worst part about doing what I used to do. And is that if you've got the gun loaded with something, you're going to shoot. Like, my gun was loaded, and it had rice, and it had salt in it. But imagine it had pellets in it. The guy had killed him, mate. And then, and then what, he took a, someone's life for what? For nothing. And, you know, and then he got rams, and then he got killed. So, listen, um, remember that... You know, when you go to prison, you've got to be careful, mate. You've got to realise, yeah, that prison's about getting out in one piece. You know what I mean? It's all like going in prison, get out in one piece. You know what I mean? You're going for a long time. You've got to remember that there's people in there, skits and fence, sight pads, will stab you up, or burn you to death with, with, with salt, with uh, sugar and water. So be careful, yeah? Anyway, bang, bang, rail. Please press the like button, subscribe. Nice one.